so y'all saw the last video of how the FRS was broken. This video I'm going to talk about what broke, the rest of the story, how I got it fixed, and about how long it took, as well as going about everything. Now I didn't take any pictures or videos of me underneath the car, sadly, and actually pulling in the trans out and pulling the exhaust and drive shaft and stuff out, which I wish I should have, but my main goal at the time was just trying to get the car back on the road. It happened on a, I think a Saturday or Sunday morning. I was headed to work and I was driving, tried to downshift, I wasn't doing anything stupid, and the car just we're going to gear, so I thought clutch, you know, slave cylinder, master, I don't know, I was just, I was mad. Well, I speed shifted a little bit, got it to somewhere where I could park safely, got it out of gear, and I was like, okay, well, there's many things that can go wrong, so let's just stop cutting losses. Called my old man, he came and got me, took me to work. And he came back, loaded up the car himself, took it back to his house. Um, wife came pick me up after work that day. We headed over there and I started looking at the car. Well, if you get on top of the motor and look at the transmission, you'll see a you'll see your slave cylinder going into what looks like a piece of black metal coming straight out of the top of the transmission. That's this the piece of black metal is the clutch fork so I started wiggling around and it was kind of free and I was like oh goodness you know did it break um, so I started doing a lot of research and I found out that apparently the clutch forks on not only the FRS but the WRX as well they're a lot weaker they're just not a strong part and they say that they bust right here in this little divot in the metal the pivot point actually wears through it or busts through it, whatever you want to call it, once you put a stronger clutch in there, like say a stage one or a stage two. So that's what I thought had happened. And I didn't think that it had a different clutch in it than a stock one, but you never know. You know, when you buy a car used, it could have 50 good things and one bad thing. And I was thinking this was the one bad thing. So, I'm like, okay, whatever. We get it off the trailer, we back it into the garage, well, push it into the garage, and I get the car jacked up. Well, I don't start tearing it apart that day, because I'm like, well, I want to go ahead and order parts, and I started looking, and not only did I find that people always replace these, I heard that they replaced the pivot points in the transmission as well. And I'm like, well, if I'm already going to have it to report, I might as well go ahead and replace it. And I said to myself, I was like, if the throwout bearing is bad too, I'll go ahead and replace the throwout bearing. And I'll look at the clutch as well. Thinking, you know, the car could be down for one week, depending, or not even that, maybe a few days if I get the parts in soon enough. Or it could be down three or four days. Maybe a week, two weeks, something like that. So I order a new pivot point and a new clutch fork. Off FT86 speed uh, factory, yada yada. They're, I think it was Voltex or something like that. I have it. I had the papers somewhere in the email somewhere. But, anyways, I ordered that. I'll probably put a picture in somewhere. But I ordered that and I waited on it to come in. And the day before the day after it came I went back over there to their house um, and I got underneath the car took off the exhaust took off the drive shaft well took it out took out the shifter linkage and stuff like that I actually unbolted the trans and dropped the trans all in like two or three hours surprisingly enough compared to from the FRS Compared to my Tiburon, whenever I did a clutch in it a few years back, the FRS 
made me want to keep it forever was how easy it was to work on that day. I don't know what it was. It just literally felt like a bag of Legos and I just took one piece off at a time. It went so smooth. I was so happy. Well, anyways, I get the trans out. Leave trans fluid on me. You know, I was like, ugh. Well, get it out and I start looking. And as you can see, this is the old one. You know, you can still, if you look closely, you can see the rust and all the old grease on it and stuff like that. It didn't bust through. And I was like, what the crap? So, looking at it closer, we come to find out that my pivot point had actually snapped. And you can see that. It snapped in half. So, I'm assuming that it was in here, snapped in, or it started to unsnap. And one clutch, well, not clutch kick, but one clutch in to shift gears just put in a much of a bind and it snapped off and it was actually still holding into it and I can't put it back in there right now but it was holding into it and I was like crap so that next day you know dad and I we pulled out the old one well that night I pulled this off and I pulled this out and then I knew that I was going to have to ease out the rest of the boat. And I was hoping that it wouldn't go bad. And if you can see, we actually had to drill it out and ease it out that way. Luckily though, you know, I was hoping the threads didn't get messed up. But whoever put this one in there, the factory one, had actually cross-threaded the whole thing. And I had to re-thread the actual hole for the pivot point and just our luck we go out to a shop and we look in his freaking tools for it I can't really think of the actual name but the first one we pulled out fits it perfectly and I was just like praise Jesus hallelujah and we went and actually redid it and it came out good we put it in torqued it down to 12 pounds foot pounds and I uh, started to go ahead and put the clutch fork on and realize something if you can see I'll take it out the clutch fork has this little spring clip and if you can see it comes up in the hair there's so much grease and goo in that it's not even funny but it goes into there and there well I'll try to bring this a little bit closer to y'all if you look right there there's holes in the clutch fork where it has two clips of it on of its own that connects the clutch fork to the throttle bearing and I searched and I searched and I searched the clips were gone and at this moment start getting mad and I didn't throw nothing or do anything like that but I searched and I searched and searched I looked in there and actual tried to see if it, there was any way it could have popped into the motor praying to God it didn't you know looked underneath the ground checked everything because as I pulled every bolt off of it I labeled it in Ziploc bags wrote on it because I was making sure that I didn't lose anything and everything went back into its place well I couldn't find it and I was like, crap, crap, crap. So I called AutoZone, called Advance, called O'Reilly's, and nobody could get me the clips. Clips didn't even exist to them. So, I did what I didn't want to do, and I called the Toyota dealership. And they gave me the same runaround of, oh yeah, we can get it, it's only $2 for the clips, both of them, yada, yada, yada. But... We won't be able to get it till Monday. It was Thursday at this time. Because they said the truck had already left. That was coming home the next day for parts. And they couldn't get it on there. So I said okay. Now where my hometown is. And the Toyota dealership that I always deal with. It's about 40 minutes away. I was like okay. You know. Well I'm still going to keep calling around. See if I can find anything. And if I do I'll let y'all know. 
And I said, oh, okay, okay, yada, 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 whatever, we don't really care. You just get something, call us, let us know so we can cancel your order. And I was like, okay. Well, so I look online because I've had to drive up to Nashville before, which is about two hours away from us, and go get parts from the Subaru dealership up there. Well, I called them and I said, hey, you know, I wonder if you got parts for a 2013 BRZ. Same, you know, same thing. And uh, they were like, yeah, we've got the clips in stock and stuff like that. And I was like, cool, how many you got? And they are like, oh, we've got like, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. And I was like, oh, sweet. So I was like, what time do y'all close? It's about 4.30, 5 o'clock right now. And they are like, oh, we close at 6. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I'll be up there tomorrow. Well, we drove up there that next morning. Got the clips. Drove all the way back down. And we... Put the clips on, hooked it into the throwout bearing. Throwout bearing still look good. The clutch look good. The flywheel look good. All that look good. Well, I mean, you know, I can't really see the flywheel and stuff that much, but well, whatever it is, I can't think right now. But everything looked good under there. You know, the clutch was still grabbing good before all of this happened. But got the car back in. Took got the trans in. It took a few minutes. You know, just hard to get it wiggled back up there with me and him. And. uh I got the whole car put back together and took her for a test drive and she drove great. Well, I, I'm still lost by these clips and it still makes me mad that somebody cross threaded this in, but I'm just going to say this. If you have an FRS, a BRZ, or a newer 86, don't really know if they've changed it yet on the newer BRZs and 86s yet. And you have to pull out your transmission to do a clutch, do whatever. Please, for the love of all that is holy, change these two pieces. Make sure they are not cross-threaded. Make sure you have actual good clips. Because I don't want y'all to have to go through what I did. Because it sucked being stranded at 3.45, 4 o'clock in the morning. And then having to call and wake somebody up just to come get you. Luckily, they didn't have to call a tow truck, and luckily, it only was a $200 fix for me. But come on, just, if you have to do the work, just replace all of it and be happy. I mean, do it, be good, be safe, be everything. But, I can go out there and show y'all. She's driving good, she's driving great. Um, one other thing I decided to do was the clutch spring. I did it, like, about a week ago. The clutch spring that attaches to the clutch pedal inside the car, I decided to take it out to see if it'd give it a different feeling on the clutch. It did. It made the clutch pedal harder, but a lot shorter as well. And I was indifferent to how I was going to like it, but it actually let me drive the car a lot better because I've been driving manuals for years, and it just, that car was always weird. I couldn't start off smooth in it. And it made me feel like a noob, like I've heard other people say. But if you can drive it good, say if you're a beginner, you can drive the car good and not, you know, jerk it around a lot with that spring in there, leave it in there. Drive with it, be great. But if you're like me and you can't drive with it in there normal, take that sucker out. It literally took me 10 minutes of laying on the ground of a 15 minute break at work. And <laughs> I enjoy driving that car so much more now. You know, I don't, you know, I don't really do many drifting, kick, clutch kicks, stuff like that. But, I've done a burnout. Did one the other night on wet pavement, because that's about all I do. Just kidding. But, I mean, it felt really good. You know, I enjoy it so much better now. But I just wanted to give you all that update, that the car is fixed and is running great. Everything is going good, but like I said, repair these two items. Fix them. Do preventative maintenance before they break on you and you're stuck in the morning or at night just like I was. But on that note, y'all should be getting a double upload this week. Maybe one after the other. Um, like, subscribe, you know. Talk to your buddies. Be like, hey, you know, this kid is an idiot, but he actually tells you good stuff. Or whatever, you know. DM me, message me on Instagram, Facebook. Twitter. I have Twitter. Whatever. But no, like, comment, subscribe, 
anything helps I love hearing feedback don't get to hear much feedback out of it still a real small youtuber I just like doing it for fun and documenting everything but y'all stay safe out there y'all be good um, stay happy y'all